to out-chomp the croc, I'm gonna have to think bigger, much bigger, to one of the biggest carnivores that ever walked the planet. Now here's an animal which is definitely built to bite, the T-Rex. Over 40 feet long, tipping the scales at six tons, with jaws over three feet long, and lined with teeth the size of railroad spikes. Man, that is some lethal weaponry. And he probably needed it, because he was going up against some serious prey. Can you imagine the bite that it must have taken to bring down a seven-ton triceratops? Some researchers believe T-Rex was a hunter. Others argue it was a scavenger. Either way, it surely had an incredible bite. I obviously can't use my bite force meter on this bad boy, but I wonder if there is a way to measure the bite force of an animal which died millions of years ago. I have a colleague who's come up with a technique to answer that exact question. In 1992, Dr. Greg Erickson, now at Florida State University, was shown a triceratops pelvis with evidence of how it died. 80 bite marks puncturing the bone. From the shape and depth of the marks, he knew there was only one carnivore capable of making them, the T-Rex. This is uh, an animal that was uh, the, the most common herbivore living at the time of Tyrannosaurus rex. And we know from bite marks that Tyrannosaurus regularly fed upon these animals. Erickson devised an experiment with a hydraulic press to replicate the force of a T-Rex bite. He made a bronze replica of a T-Rex tooth and used cow bones in place of Triceratops bones. He then impacted the tooth into the cow bone to the same depth as he saw in the T-Rex bite mark and then looked at how much force it took to achieve that same depth. What we determined is that it would take 3,000 pounds of bite force for Tyrannosaurus rex to make this particular bite mark. And that's just a single tooth mark. Erickson doubled the figure to account for teeth on the upper and lower jaws working together. This puts the T-Rex bite at 6,000 pounds. 